Hello and welcome to the HES Fast Track webinar. Uh, today we are happy to have Daniel Partridge with us, who's going to be doing uh, a half hour presentation on uh, Fast Track advantages. Uh, he's, for the next half hour, he's going to be reviewing all of the things that make installers' lives easier and, uh, and also improve, improves profitability uh, with your solar installs. Um, if you have questions, please type them into the question panel on your uh, GoToMeeting control panel. Uh, we will be waiting until the end of the uh, presentations to be answering questions. And um, that is about it. Um, Dan, uh, again, thank you for joining us today. And uh, over to you. All right. Well, thank you very much to everyone for uh, for attending. And I apologize for a little bit of a late start today, uh, just a couple moments behind. But uh, but yeah, we can jump right in. Um, I know we've got a lot of new dealers on the phone, and we've got a bunch of dealers that are just also uh, looking for um, more information about our product. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to have to be presenting for you for today. Uh, a couple of the key topics I wanted to just go over, and uh, it was. The, uh, starting with our uh, roof penetrations with the Ultra Flash and the Talon. I uh, want to talk a little bit about the engineering support that HES has uh, available for you and uh, specifically uh, for answering any uh, building department uh, questions um, uh, or issues that may come up. Come up. Um, I'm then going to go into a little bit about some of the features that we have for, uh, for the Fast Track system. And then, of course, I'm going to go uh, show everyone a little bit of a demonstration on of our online uh, design tools. So jumping right in, the uh, the Ultra Flash. Uh, this is our, our you know, tried, tested, and true uh, flashing system, which most of you uh, installers have probably worked with at some point or other, or something very similar to it. Uh, this is the uh, the system where you'll be locating your truss, you'll drill your pilot hole, uh, you backfill that pilot hole with your sealant, um, install your flashing under your shingles, um, and, and then attach an L foot with a with a lag screw um, uh, to make a nice sealed uh, sealed surface. Um, sorry, pardon me for a second. Um, so the uh, the Fast Track Ultra Flash, uh, when you order it, um, it does come with this um, with our, our flashing with its own sealing grommet. As I said, um, the leg screw, and it also comes with uh, one of our slim L feet, which actually has a beveled edge machined into the bottom of it to actually mate to the sealing element on the flashing. Uh, so you end up uh, not only having a seal in, in the hole itself with your backfill sealant, um, you'll also have a seal at um, the, the connection between the flashing and the L foot, and uh, the sealed grommet on the the top of the leg screw to provide an extra an extra layer of sealant. Um, yeah, the Ultra Flash it's, uh, been this, the concept's been around for forever, and uh, um, and we still love it, but it, uh, it does have its uh, its pros and cons. Um, the, uh, because of some of its cons, we actually developed the Fast Track Talon. Um, the big advantage of the Talon is that you're not going to be spending all of your time hunting for trusses. Um, the, the Talon itself is actually designed to secure directly to the roof decking or sheathing. Um, we, have, uh, we have documents, uh, capacities all the way down to the minimum uh, building code uh, of 3 8 inch um, uh, sheathing. Um, but obviously, most of your residential properties are going to have uh, have the considerably thicker than that, up to your half inch, and uh, if you're lucky, seven eighths. Um, the uh, the talon, it's uh, it, again the benefit of it is that you're not hunting for your trusses. All you're going to do is mark out where you want your whole locations to be. You'll mark out your your spans based on the span tables, which are available on our website. Um, you'll install the talon base plate, uh, add the flashing and the L foot. I've got a brief video here, uh, which I'll talk about, which we'll get to in just a moment. Um, sorry, pardon me, a little out of order. Uh, before going on to the video, I uh, just wanted to talk about why we developed the Talon. And it was because of exactly this, is the, the, the methods of finding uh, trusses uh, are, are the hands down one of the most time consuming uh, aspects of the job. Um, you know, there's the old school uh, hammer method and listening to the different uh, different uh, sounds of the knock. My hearing's not that good, so I, I actually have a heck of a time uh, noticing the difference, um, and so I, I I don't trust that method personally. 
Uh, I know there's guys out there that are much more comfortable with it. Great, good on you. Uh, the big issue with it is, is you don't have any guarantee that you're actually hitting the center line of your truss um, when you're when you're using the hammer method. Um, other, me other, me other methods include, of course, the locate and measure. That's where you know opening up a vent in the roof to to find out where your trusses are and then measuring 24 inch on center after that. Um, that's running on the, the goal that the roof was actually built uh, properly with 24 on center trusses. Um, again, hard to miss, hard to hit the center line of the uh, of the trusses just due to human error in the in the actual building of the home <clears throat> or the roof. Pardon me. Um, other one that I really enjoy using um, and it it was my go-to before the Talon came along was the stud finder. The particular model I used was the DTEC 400. Um, gives a, a really nice uh, scanned image of the of the uh, the underside of your roof. Helped you lay out both the start and the end of a truss so you could guarantee or get as close to hitting the center line of that truss as possible. A uh, big issue that I had with the stud finder, of course, is when you're dealing with an asphalt roof, um, it, the stud finders were best on a smooth, flat surface. So you'd usually end up putting a piece of, uh, of cardboard uh, over top just to provide yourself a, a good, clean running surface. Um, still great methods, still love the ultra flash, but, um, but the talon. Uh, saves you a whole bunch of time on that hunting. Um, as far as the ceiling goes, the talon does come uh, with the pre-installed butyl uh, membrane, both on the underside of the talon, so where it's going to interface with your flat, with your uh, asphalt shingle, and as well on top of it, where the the uh, at the connection point between the flashing and the the talon base plate itself. Uh, that is uh, this area right here. Um, additionally, it comes with uh, a course the the flashing unit itself and uh, carriage bolt and flange nut uh, those will actually penetrate through the underside of the talon base and it'll be how you're going to connect your L foot onto this system once it's all installed uh, you'll see in the picture I show I've shown uh, 10 screws and I've got uh, I've called out 10 uh, one and a half inch metal screws um, on this uh, on this sheet uh, the reason for that is uh, the, that is, I call it metal screws is it actually comes down to the most metal screws out there on the market have the same pitch as uh, as your wood screws. Uh, the only benefit is, is that they don't have that unthreaded shank uh, underneath the head of the screw. Because the talons designed to connect to the sheathing, we want as much thread in there as possible. We don't want to be uh, we don't want to be wasting any of the bearing capacity with the unthreaded shank. Um, I do have a quick little video here. This is the one I promised earlier. We'll see if it'll actually launch for me. Um, and so what we have here is a, a video that Cameron put together um, just to show some of the, the installation method for the for the Talon. Uh, here we have the base. The carriage bolt, of course, as I said, penetrates through the bottom of the base. There's a, a pre-punched hole for it. Um, and then the 10 screws, of course, to hold the the base plate down to your roof. Hopefully your shingles are a little more flexible than this, but uh, that, that was what we had at the time. And um, and there we are with the uh, the carriage bolt in place. Your outfit obviously would go between the carriage bolt and the top of that flashing. Um, and there we are. Uh, so yeah, again, uh, great product. We're actually finding the markets uh, loving it. It's taking it up very quickly. Um, it's been around for, I guess, a year and a half, almost two years now. Um, and yeah, it, it's been, it's, uh, it's rapidly become the staple of, uh, of our, uh, of our, of our installs. Um, moving on the, uh, the engineering. So we, we, we designed this, we wanted the system for Canada. There's a lot of uh, other systems out there, um, especially out of the States that are designed for the Southern U S um, uh, either for you know, the, the dry, uh, dry uh, midwestern uh, temp climates or um, um, yeah or just not designed for the heavy snow loads that, that we potentially get in Canada uh, to help with that um, we, we did it we designed we tested to uh, to the ex accepted expected loads in Canada um, and have uh, some sealed documents to support uh, support the testing we've done um, and have available for for you guys um, and for your, of course, for your uh, building departments, should they need them uh, for approval of, the, of your installations. 
Uh, I'll let you right, know right now that the SPAN table is currently sealed for uh, British Columbia, Alberta, and Ontario. And we are working on uh, Nova Scotia, Manitoba, and Saskatchewan. Uh, for the people in Manitoba, I apologize. That is not the initials for Manitoba. That was my typo. Um, and I didn't get a chance to reflect, fix it before this presentation. Um, the engineering Talon letter. So specifically for the Talon, uh, it is, a, a, again, a sealed document uh, by a third-party structural engineering company uh, verifying the capacity and design and, uh, and uh, review of our test methods of the Talon. Um, so that's available again. Uh, particularly, that's uh, if you have any building department questions, is, uh, we can make that available to you. Um, other ways that we can help, they're, they're a little bit, um, um, the least, uh, well, I guess probably the most helpful and the least time, uh, time consuming is our sample layout drawing with uh, roof penetration details. Um, all of your sales reps can get these drawings to you. Um, it, it is just a, uh, it's a six, five page document which has um, an image of our of the talon and its interconnection method, um, the lag screw. Um, we have an S5 for your standing seam installs, um, a core slide for the corrugated metal roofs, and the EJOT as well for your metal roofs. Um, just in case building departments want to, that kind of level of detail for your roof penetrations. Um, I know some municipalities, of course, uh, want uh, not just a generic uh, drawing set with roof penetration, they want site specific. Um, and we can help with that um, and put together the uh, put together a, a drawing package based on dimensions provided by uh, by you and uh, and your installation teams. Um, best thing I can say to that is is the the better the better the sketch or drawings that I receive, uh, the better uh, a layout drawing that we can provide for you. Um, be advised this does take uh, time from myself and my team. Uh, there will usually be a, a, a charge involved in this, and it'll be based on the size of the layout. Um, but we, we do try to turn them around as quick as possible, and we, we don't uh, um, we don't find that they're required as often uh, for most municipalities. Um, the next part, so getting away from the structural side and the mechanical side of things, is the electrical side, um, and how uh, how fast track has been. Um, uh, been designed for to, to comply with electrical code. Um, at the moment, we have our fast track SMIG, which is um, it's our mid clamp. It has an integrated bonding element involved and designed into it, um, and it's actually CETEL listed uh, to 22.2 number 41. Uh, that's your bonding element requirement. Um, as well, we have just completed uh, the testing, and the, we now have the authorization to mark for the FRGND lug dash C. Um, it will also come with this uh, the CETL stamp on it uh, to make your lives easier uh, should any electrical inspectors have any questions regarding. Um, and the next goal, and this is the goal for Q1, uh, Q1 slash Q2 this year, is to get the whole fast track system uh, up to 2703 um, and uh, and have that uh, that on the market for you. Um, it's a bit of a bit of a process to get through, um, but we are working on it. Um, and just uh, as, as soon as we make it, as soon as we have it completed, of course, we're going to be uh, letting everyone know. Uh, just at this point, I do want to point out really quickly is um, there's a lot of uh, companies uh, selling racking on the market, um, and uh, and of course the the using wonderfully uh, vague words like designed to or compliant with, and even in accordance with UL 2703. Uh, that is not the same as being listed or certified. Um, really, we, everybody designed to or in compliance with. Um, it's just it, it, they're not necessarily listed. So do double check that um, if you uh, if you have any questions uh, about um, uh, about some of the, the material that you find around. Uh, moving on from that, I see I'm actually not doing too too bad for time here. So I will uh, I'll slow down a little bit when we talk about the the features of the of the of the fast track that make your installation's life easier, your life as an installer easier. Um, the first big one, we our rails come in uh, in four convenient lengths. Um, the uh, if you're familiar with our product, the fast track uh, rail seven or the seven foot rail, it's designed for holding uh, two solar modules. Um, the ten is a perfect fit for three. 
the 13 for four, and our 20 foot rail for uh, for six modules. Um, it comes with a bit of an asterisk is uh, the LG 400 is a little bit wider. Um, so, uh, so we do have a way to help you with that, which I'll talk about shortly in, in the online tool section. Um, but yeah, just be advised, we do have the four different lengths available for you. Um, and uh, with that, there's a, you're hard pressed to find a combination that we can't, uh, um, can't install with minimal end cuts. The idea being there's no for rail to have to cut half of it off and, and make it scrap. Uh, for our different um, different installation types, we've got our ultra rail and our heavy duty. Uh, the ultra we originally designed it for your your buildings with your 24 inch on center trusses. Um, ideally, we like to see that 48 inch on center maximum span. Um, there are some uh, some locations with low snow or wind loads where we can actually get a little bit longer of a span. Uh, but again, this is your your typical um, typical residential rail. Um, if you've installed the residential with us recently I'm willing to put money down that you put uh, used the UL rail the other side of the coin is the heavy duty uh, the the heavy duty rail or, or HD is what uh, probably is most most commonly called uh, it's a it's a taller rail profile which has a stronger uh, stronger bearing capacity which allows us to get away with longer spans um, it's great for your commercial buildings or industrial buildings that happen to have uh, greater than uh, 48 inch uh, trusses and uh, and uh, or supports uh, depending if it's a metal frame building um, and uh, so again uh, useful for for larger applications uh, on that the HD rail is also uh, the, the the building block or the the backbone of our ground mount system and uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit uh, briefly at the end with uh, when I show you some of the online tools we have for for that as well um, but it is uh, we, it's a fantastic rail, but a little heavy for most residential installs. People find we want to keep the costs as low as possible, and that's where the ultra comes in. Um, with the uh, with the both of our rails, they all connect. They both connect to the roof using our L foot. Um, and the one of the great things about that L foot is uh, it is cor it has a mating corrugation to the side of our rail profile. Uh, as well as a slotted keyway, which allows you to get a bit of a vertical height adjustment. And let's see if this will work for us as well. Um, so second video of the day is just this one nicely. Um, the, the, that's an HD rail connecting to our, our T-bolt. There's your vertical adjustment uh, for you to, uh, to adjust it. Ideally with this, uh, not so much for raising the array off the roof, uh, but more, uh, more importantly, for getting any bends or uh, or wave waves out of uh, any older roofs or roofs that may have a bit of bit of a sag to them, it allows you to level out the array and get a nice clean finished uh, finished look on the on the on the project. Uh, moving on from that, of course, we have our splice. Um, we came up with a nice universal splice design. It actually fits down the uh, T slots on the side of our rails. Um, provides the bearing capacity uh, normal to the rail to uh, to give you the strength you need to uh, to, to adequately support solar modules. Um, earlier on, when I talked about moving on to the the roof types uh, uh, section of this, um, I mentioned earlier on that we have uh, roof penetration details for uh, for a variety of different roof types, be it asphalt shingle, standing seam, or corrugated metal roof. Um, and we do have exactly that is we've got access to the the, the S5 product line uh, for anybody with the standing seam metal roof. We have the Talon and the Ultra Flash for your shingles and uh, the Chorus Slide uh, for anybody who's actually installing on a corrugated metal roof. Uh, it's a great product. It actually has a has a, an ability to adjust to different widths of trapezoid profiles. Um, and uh, we have, yeah, we, that's available for you should you need it. Um, EJOD as well, of course, is available. Um, and get great for trapezoids um, and trapezoid roofs, really, uh, and of course your your wave patterns. Um, there we are. So last thing I wanted to take a look at is our online design tools. Uh, this has been up for a little while. We've modified it recently to uh, to clean out some of the clutter, and uh, and I think it's actually. Uh, going to help make lives a lot easier for for you as installers 
this is particularly for um, for flush roof installs. Uh, we have a separate one for ground mount, which I'll show you briefly at the end. But the uh, but the way this thing works, I'm just going to launch it here. Bear with me for a second. Um, so what I'll just do is uh, we'll call this we'll call this presentation. Um, choosing the module type. Um, these are what we'll do is we keep this list updated with our currently available modules um, to also help you uh, uh, keep current on what what modules we sell and uh, and of course the racking you need for those. Uh, just choosing the HS275 mono as uh, the module module we want for our install. Uh, once you hit the next button, you come up to the roof type and anchor. Um, so as I said, for our asphalt shingle roofs, you've got the Talon and the Ultra Flash available. Uh, if you were looking at a standing seam, of course, the S5 is our go-to on that one. Um, uh, and corrugated, you've got the Chorus Light or the EJOT. Just going to jump back to the asphalt shingle. I like the Talon. Let's keep with that. We do have the two L feet, uh, the uh, the offset foot and the slim. Uh, slim is a is a it's a, a definitely our most common would be the slim. Um, advantage of it is is the cost is a little bit less. Um, it's just as functional as the offset. Uh, the offset has an advantage in that the penetration to the roof deck and the connection to the rail are not uh, not in line with each other. This makes it a little bit easier to get. Um, uh, get a socket in there to uh, to drive the uh, to drive your connection, uh, to drive your either your lag or the carriage bolt, uh, the the flange nut for the carriage bolt, uh, for securing the L foot to the uh, to the roof. Um, we'll keep it at the the offset foot for the time being and move on. Uh, this is the builder. This is the the great uh, the great uh, the great part of the system. If you're looking at a roof and say we realize, you know, you, based on your measurements, you've decided you're going to get three rows of modules on that roof, um, but maybe there's only maybe it's a double hip roof and you're going to get two on the top, three on the second row, and four on the bottom, and we're going to leave them all in portrait. But you do have the ability to change to landscape. Um, the couple other additional options that we have available for you is uh, is the ability to negate 20 foot rails. Um, a lot of that comes down to is the 20 foot rails are a little bit harder on the shipping um, because you are paying for the the fact that they they, they require a longer vehicle usually uh, than your normal transporter um, and what so there we've stocked them in less warehouses is, is ultimately the the important part for you guys um, but if you don't want if you want to negate 20 foot rails you can take keep it leave it on the default for no um, if you're using uh, any system with a microinverter or optimizer, um, you can actually select yes, and what it will do, it will include hardware to to adequate, accurately uh, mount that hardware. And then our uh, our flashing system. So this is just a trim kit, um, which fits over the the uh, the sides of the array. It actually caps over the uh, the whole length of the the side of the array, side of the array. Pardon me. Um, and provides just a nice clean finish so that nobody sees any rail ends, um, and that's that's uh, that's also available. I'm going to leave that in the off position or the no selection for the moment, and uh, and we'll continue on. Just to give an idea what our system outputs is with our two on the top, three in the middle, four on the bottom. Uh, obviously, it doesn't center it; it just gives a good example of what we're looking at for for the for the equipment, uh, just so that you can make sure that. Uh, that your counts are accurate to to what you have selected here. Once we hit the next button, that's where the good part happens. You actually get a breakdown of all of the individual components you need to make this install work, um, as well as you'll notice up here uh, the measurements of the uh, of the individual arrays. So my top row, which has uh, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, which is two modules wide. We know that it's six feet ten and a quarter inches wide. That's how, how long it needs. So it's going to fully uh, consume those seven foot rails that uh, that we talked about earlier in the presentation. Um, so your total rails that you're going to need for these installs: a um, couple sevens, a couple tens, a couple thirteens. Uh, the end clamps that you'll need based on uh, the thickness of the module you're using. Uh, your mid clamps, your feet, the talons, uh, ground lugs, one per set of rail. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. 
and uh, mounting hardware, accessory mounting hardware. That's all, uh, that's the part count that you're going to be hunting for. To take it one step further, and this has actually been a, a great thing that's uh, that's available for you guys, a single button gets you to this wonderful grocery list that you guys can save to your computer, print out to a PDF, whatever you want to do, send that onto your sales rep. And that's the that's the, the itemized list of stuff that you want, and then they can uh, turn shorten the, the time needed for uh, for quoting the product. Very briefly, that's the the component generator. I do recommend just playing around in it, giving it a couple tries, different layouts. Um, you get yourself familiar with it, so that when you when you uh, for when your next customer comes in, uh, you can put together uh, your your quotes, and of course uh, um, work with your sales rep to to get uh, pricing proper uh, straightened out quickly. Um, that's it for the 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 fast track ultra component generator. The other one I want to take a quick second point out that it's here. I'm not going to go deeply into it, but is our ground mount uh, material generator. Uh, very similar to the previous one, select the module you're going to use, the modules that you're going to need, um, and then the results tab just tells you how many of the leg kits and rail kits you're going to need uh, to build said mount. Um, with that, um, if you have any questions when using it, feel free to call myself or to call your sales rep and they can walk you through it. And we can, <clears throat> pardon me, and we can help with any questions you have on that side. At this point, I'm just going to close this down, get back to my presentation, and there we are. So what I'll do is I'm going to take a couple seconds, let you uh, uh, type in any questions that may have come up uh, from the presentation, and Cameron's going to uh, read them out, and then I will do my best to uh, to answer them. All right. Daniel, thank you so much. That was uh, well done. I uh, really appreciate you doing that for everyone today. And everyone that's here, thank you very much for attending today. Uh, if you do have questions, obviously uh, type them in now or we can answer them uh, at a later date through emails. Um, we, uh, yeah, it's spring. It's, uh, well, it's not spring. <laughs> it's winter. It's a lot of massive cold snap going on across the country. Um, but it's uh, going to be coming up to install season soon. And uh, if you need any help with any projects, we're here for that exact reason. Um, we are going to be doing some uh, training events coming up as well, uh, the building solar business training events. Um, those are across the country, uh, starting in Barrie, uh, and they'll be in uh, Edmonton, Calgary, and Victoria as well. Um, the dates for those are in Victoria, it's the 21st and 22nd of February. Um, in Barry, it's the 7th and 8th of March, and for Alberta, you're looking for uh, Calgary is the 12th and 13th, and Edmonton is the 14th. Um, so call your reps about that, and they will be more than happy to give you some information about um, about the trainings and uh, and getting you uh, signed up um, as well. Uh, and I've got a little note here as well. There will be a, a Nova Scotia uh, training date uh, in March as well. We do not have a date for that yet, but it is coming soon. Um, when we do, we will let you know. Um, so it doesn't, Dan, it looks like you've done such a good job that the questions are haven't come in yet. But um, thanks again uh, for the presentation. And everybody, thank you so much. Um, Oh, I do have one question. Is the timeline for the 2703 uh, CUL listing, if you've got that? So with that, I we are working on it currently. Um, at this point, it is uh, back and forth between us and uh, and the, the folks at Intertech. Um, they have told me that uh, that it is not a quick and easy process. So I I'm I'm I would love to see it by the end of Q1, but. Um, I, I don't have a definitive date at this moment in time. Uh, I apologize that I, that I don't have that number available for it, but I don't have it. Um, and yeah, as soon as I do have a, a key timeline, I think we're going to be shouting from the rooftops uh, just to make sure that everybody knows that what's uh, what, when it's coming down the line. I'm pretty sure I can help you with that. Okay, well, thank you very much, everybody, and uh, stay warm and uh, have a great uh, a great day. Thanks again, Dan. Cheers. Bye.